Hey everyone, it's Suffer, and today we're going to be taking a look at my digital art process. Okay, so some time ago now, one of you guys requested that I make a video showing how I use my layers in Photoshop, so that is what I'm gonna be doing today. And of course, there are a million different ways that you can use layers and like that you can draw digitally, but this is just how I do it, and maybe you can find some helpful tips in there or something. So yeah, I'm just gonna gonna like go through what I do and you'll see and it's gonna be great. Okay, wonderful. And now I'm in the corner. Wow, so much fun. Okay, so first up you want to create a file, of course. You do that by pressing new or control M and then you can set your settings. I like to set it to 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. Uh, and then I like to put my resolution to 350 dpi. 300 is the lowest resolution that you want for printing. Not that I ever print anything, but it's just like a good rule of thumb. So I opt it to 350 because I'm just that fancy. When you have your new file, we can go ahead and create a layer. Photoshop automatically creates a background layer for you. You want to make a new layer on top because if you draw on the background layer you're gonna draw on top of the white and that's not really fun i do that sometimes by accident and then i hate myself so you want to just create an empty layer on top and then you want to do a sketch let's uh do that really quick okay so now we have a very very rough sketch it looks kind of uh messy and we can't really see what's going on so what I like to do is select my layer and go into opacity and turn it down and then I do another layer on top of that and then to keep track of all my layers I like to go in and group my layers which I can do by clicking ctrl G or I can click this little folder icon down here boop and then I say okay I want this to be named sketch boop and then I put these in the group so now we have our two sketch layers and I'm gonna go in on the second sketch layer and refine our sketch a bit more. Actually, maybe I should name all my layers. Okay, so now I'm actually finding that when I try and zoom into my art and start refining it, it's very pixelated. Uh, which I am not a fan of. So I think, actually, we also have all this space that we don't really need for anything. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop my canvas and then I'll increase the resolution of it. So I actually usually like to work with square canvases if I can, because that just makes it uh, nice and easy if you wanna upload anything to Instagram, because we live in a world where Instagram is uh, the thing, I guess. So <laughs> I have been caught by the Instagram epidemic. And now that we have the size that we like, we're going to go into image. We're gonna go into image size. So it's only like approximately 8 by 8 centimeters, which is not very much. So I like to go into the percent and maybe we'll do, make it 250% bigger. Boop. And now it's bigger. So now if I go in and try to draw again, you can see it's, you know what? Actually, I want it a tiny bit bigger. Now it's 19 by 19. Maybe we'll just change the centimeters. So let's make it 30 by 30 centimeters. Haha, okay. So now when we go in and, and try and draw on here, the resolution is way nicer and we don't get that pixelated line that we had before. Okay, so now we have refined our sketch and we're ready for line art. If we want to go with line art, which I think we want to do in this case, maybe, probably. Yeah, let's do that. So I close down my sketch folder, I make a new folder, I call it lines. And then within that folder, I make a layer. And depending on the complexity of the artwork, I make different layers for line work. But for this one, it's just one very simple character standing looking. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to make one layer for line art, but it's still nice to have it within a group. So I'm going to select a black color and do the outlines. And then if I want colored outlines, I'll go in later and do that. In order to do the lines, I want to have the sketch not be very visible. So I'm going to just lower the opacity and the lower you can get it, the better, because you want to be able to see what you're drawing without being distracted by the sketch too much. So I like to put it somewhere around 17 
10, like somewhere in, in there. Now we're ready to do some line art. Now that we have the line work, we're ready to go and add some colors. And there are a lot of different ways to fill in your character with color. I'm gonna show you the one that I found takes the least amount of time and is the easiest for me to do. So we're gonna fill this in with the fill bucket tool. Bucket fill tool? The tool that fills. And since my line art usually has gaps in it because I'm a dum-dum, I go in and fill those with some sort of color just so that when we start selecting it's not gonna flood into the character. So what we're gonna do is grab this magic wand tool, we're gonna select everything outside of the character, including that little bit, and then we're going to go into selection, modify, expand, then we'll expand the selection by one pixel and you'll see, you'll see why later. <laughs> this might be a bit complicated but just hang in there. Okay, so now we expanded everything by one pixel, and if we were to go and fill it in now, we would fill the outside, which we don't really want. So we're gonna go into selection, inverse, and then now we have the character selected, so we're ready to fill it. Now, if we go in on the base layer and just fill it in like so, you'll see that all these bits that I used to fill in the holes will have this white edge around it, which isn't very desirable. So the way to not have that is create a new layer on top and then we fill that. And then we can just merge those two together by pressing Control E and now it's one layer. Now the reason that we wanted to do that whole expand selection by one pixel is because now you can see that the selection ended up being inside of this line, which is really good because then our color is not gonna uh, come out underneath the line. So there we go. Now we have our character filled in and ready to color. And here's a tip for you if you have something that's one color, like I have this red uh, base of the character, but I want it to be the skin color of the character. So I can use this lock transparency feature and then you see there's this uh, padlock here, which means that now the transparency of the character is locked and you can draw on this layer, but it's only gonna draw where there's already been drawn, <laughs> basically. So I can use my paint bucket tool to just change the color. Okay, so let's start off with the hair. I'm gonna make a layer, I'm gonna call it hair, and then I'm gonna use what's called a clipping mask, which you can find by right-clicking and clicking create clipping mask, or you can just hold down alt and click between the two layers, and then it's gonna make it into a clipping mask, which basically does the same as the transparency look, but it's on a different layer, so now I can draw within this shape that I've filled in. So then I just go in and fill the hair like so, making sure that I stay inside of the lines, of course. Okay, so now that I have all of the lines that are touching other parts of her filled in, I can actually, again, go in with my magic wand tool. I'm gonna set the tolerance a bit lower because then I can select smaller areas. And then I'm just gonna select these two. I'm gonna go in and expand my selection by let's say three pixels boop and then i will make a new layer on top of this fill it in with the bucket tool and merge it and now we have the hair done you could also whoops i missed a spot <laughs> you could also just color it in manually but this is a bit faster if you have a lot of flat colors to lay down okay so now i want to color in her shirt so i'm going to make a shirt layer and you see, since I made it underneath the hair layer, it's automatically a clipping mask to the base. And here comes the smart part, because now I colored in the hair, and most of the shirt is underneath the hair. Technically, this part isn't underneath, but if I, let me find a shirt color. I want it to be pink. If I now go in on color, you will see that I'm coloring outside of the lines, but it's staying underneath that hair layer. So all of the edges that are touching other edges, I technically only have to do once. So I just go in and fill different things and make sure that all the edges are clean. And then I can fill the next thing, not having to worry about going right up to the edge. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> so again, now I have the shirt and we can then go in and make a layer for the backpack. 
and then the backpack is underneath the shirt, which is kind of stupid. I probably should have made the backpack uh, on top of the shirt. But now we can go in and say we want the backpack to be maybe blue, and then we can just color in that backpack without having to worry about the edges, which is pretty cool. I mean, of course I have to not color the skin, <laughs> but you know. And then here we, of course, have to worry about the edges because it is touching something that I haven't yet colored. But that's the general gist of it. Okay, so now that she's all colored, you can see that I made some different layers and actually I decided to put the shoes and the shirt on the same layer because they're not really touching and they're actually the same color. So I thought that that would just be easier. I do that sometimes when I have a lot of layers. I go, hmm, can I maybe put some of the things on the same layer? And I put the shoe accents, so the white, and also the cuffs of the pants on the same layer because those also aren't touching and they're just small details. Cool, I think maybe I should change the color of the backpack, actually. Okay, let's just go with that. I can't really figure out what color would suit this nicely. But, you see, I also made this layer called glasses, and whenever I do characters with glasses, there are two ways that I like to do it. Sometimes I just draw the glasses, like, way on top of everything else, but this time I, um, <laughs> I already incorporated them into the line art. So I just, I have this layer, and I'm gonna turn down the opacity, so now you'll see that you can see the different colors through. Maybe we'll turn it down a bit more. So it just kinda gives some sort of effect. Actually, when real people wear glasses, this doesn't really happen. They just It's just the same color. <laughs> but I like this. It's, um, it's a cute little cartoony thing. So then we'll do some shading, I guess. And again, there are many different ways to do shading, and I also do it differently every time that I do it, but a lot of the time I like to just create a layer on top of my other layers. I'll call it shadow. And for this, since it's so simple, I think I'll just use this one shadow layer. So what I do is I go into multiply, and I turn the opacity down a bit, and then I find a purple color that I like, or a red or a blue, depending on the mood of the scene. I like to use purple though, that's my, my favorite shadow color. <laughs> and then I just go in here, and I start drawing on some shadows. And the great thing about this way of shading is that if you were to to shade on top of all the colors, it would actually make a shadow color that fits with that color that you're shading on top of because of the multiply layer. So this is a really great way of shading because you don't have to go in and change your color every time that you need to shade a new color. Great, so now I'm just gonna go in and put shadows everywhere. Okay, so I did all of the shadows, and I added this yellow rim lighting, and I am just gonna flip through all of the blending modes to see which one fits the best. I think I'm gonna go with hard light, and then I'm also gonna tone down the opacity just a tiny bit. Now, I want to go in and color the lines, because we have this really awkward um, <laughs> black line right next to the rim light. So what I'm gonna do now is just go into our lines folder. I'm gonna create another layer on top of our line layer. Let me just name that. And then we can name this color. And then I'm going to make this a clipping mask so that I can draw on top of the lines like so. You know what, actually I think I want the light layer to just be uh, on normal blending mode. And then I'm just gonna find a lighter yellow color. And I think I like that a lot better. <laughs> so now I am just gonna grab my color and I'll just color the lines everywhere that we have the light hitting. Cool, now we have all of the lighting and shading details in there. Uh, so another thing that I like to do sometimes is to use gradients. I don't know if it's gonna work well with this drawing, but we'll try. So what I do is I go into a layer, say we want to put a gradient on the hair layer, and I pick the color of the hair, and I make it a bit darker, maybe change the hue a bit, and then I go grab the gradient tool. I set it to a, a transparent gradient, like so, a linear transparent gradient, and then I lock the transparency of my layer, and then I just gradient the hair a bit. Uh, da, 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 da. And then sometimes I also do a bit of a lighter color, 
in the top. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Just to get some, some value change in there. Yeah, I mean, I guess that works pretty okay. We can also do it with the skin a little bit. And then when I do the skin, I like to go in and mark off areas with the selection tool. So I want to just work on the face now. And then I just, whoops, need to go to my base layer. And uh, then I can just kind of shade it in a bit like that. And then I can select the neck like so. Put a bit of a gradient there. We'll do the arm too. Put some gradient here. We can do the legs too, maybe? Yeah, that's nice, I like that, I like that. Okay, actually the color of the backpack is really bothering me, so I think I'm gonna go in there. I am going to find a color that's not nearly as intense, and then I will use my paint bucket tool to just change it, is that better? It was a bit too um, saturated for the rest of the image before. And there we go. So we can put in a background if we want to do that. I'm not gonna like illustrate a whole background because um, <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. So we're just going to, I'm just gonna name it background and we'll do a flat color. Maybe we'll do orange. Orange a good color, I like orange. Yeah, that's nice, I like that. And then we can also, if we want to, we can say, oh, let's make some shadow. So we can use that same trick that we did for the character. We find a multiply layer and we'll call this, whoops. We'll call this one shadow and we'll turn the opacity down a bit. And then we can go in and draw a little shadow here. So once we have the shadow, we can do a little trick because it looks kind of weird right now. Uh, we can make what's called a layer mask. That's this icon. And um, I did it wrong. Whoops. <laughs> um, make a layer mask. Here we go. And then I select this. And then on the layer mask, I'm going to take my gradient tool with a black color. And then I'm just going to do this. And then fade the shadow into nothing, basically. Because this layer mask is telling Photoshop what of the layer that it's attached to should be shown. So everything that is black on the layer mask will not be shown on the layer and everything that's white will be shown. So by making this black gradient, we're gonna just make it so that we see a gradient of what's underneath, basically. Then we can do the same for the other one here, just a tiny bit. Yes, and then maybe we can go and make Let's make a circle. We'll use the ellipse selection tool. And we'll make maybe like a lighter orange color. Then we'll use the paint bucket tool and make a circle. And there we go. <laughs> That's basically uh, an illustration there. We did it, wow, amazing. <laughs> So we can go through our layer structure really quick. We have our line folder, color folder, sketch folder, and background folder. We started out with the sketch folder. This one has just some layers and uh, yeah, I, I didn't name them all, but that's fine. And then we have our color folder. No, whoops, we have the line folder uh, in which we just have our lines. And then we have a color over top of the line. And then we have our color folder in which we have our base color. And then we have all of the different parts of our character are on different layers so that we can easily change the color out. And then we have our shadow and light layers and also the glasses. And if you're doing a more complex illustration, I would recommend that for every element in the drawing, you make a base layer. And then for every like shift of color, you can make these clipping masks. So if you were to draw, say like this, uh, image that you see here, you would make me one layer with clipping masks. So my hair would be one clipping mask and my shirt would be another. You would make the chair a layer that has clipping masks for the red. You would make my microphone one layer that has clipping masks and so on and so forth. And then I would put all of the characters in one folder and then the background in another folder just to keep track of everything. Yeah, so that's about it. And of course, as I said in the beginning, there's no right way of doing digital art. 
This is just how I like to do it and I also change it up a lot depending on what I'm drawing and how I'm feeling that day. Uh, so this is just one way to do it and one of the ways that I like to do it. So I hope that you find some of these tips helpful and that you are super inspired to go create some digital art now uh, and that you enjoyed the video. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you later.